Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading 2 Kings 1, Jeremiah 10, and Isaiah 17. Now let's pray before we get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you've poured out on us that we don't deserve, and giving us your Son to come and die for our sins that we might have this relationship with you and share glory with you in heaven, Lord. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and our minds to anything that you would have us to know today or any way we might be trying to change us to be more like you. Please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation, that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Second Kings 1 After Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. So he sent messengers, saying to them, Go and consult Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to see if I will recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going off to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore, this is what the Lord says, You will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So Elijah went. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you come back? A man came to meet us, they replied, and he said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and tell him, This is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are sending messengers to consult Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. The king asked them, What kind of man was it who came to meet you and told you this? They replied, He had a garment of hair and had a leather belt around his waist. The king said, That was Elijah the Tishbite. Then he sent to Elijah a captain with his company of fifty men. The captain went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill, and said to him, Man of God, the king says, Come down. Elijah answered the captain, If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. At this, the king sent to Elijah another captain with his fifty men. The captain said to him, Man of God, this is what the king says, Come down at once. If I am a man of God, Elijah replied, May fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. Then the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men. So the king sent a third captain with his fifty men. This third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life and the lives of these fifty men, your servants. See, fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men, but now have respect for my life. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went down with him to the king. He told the king, This is what the Lord says. Is it because there is no God in Israel for you to consult that you have sent messengers to consult Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. So he died, according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. Because Ahaziah had no son, Joram succeeded him as king in the second year of Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. As for all the other events of Ahaziah's reign, and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jeremiah 10 Hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails, so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. 
No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not fear you, King of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise leaders of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. They are all senseless and foolish. They are taught by worthless wooden idols. Hammered silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz. What the craftsmen and goldsmith have made is then dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. When he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Tell them this. These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. The images he makes are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless, the objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is the portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things, including Israel, the people of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. Gather up your belongings to leave the land, you who live under siege. For this is what the Lord says, At this time I will hurl out those who live in this land. I will bring distress on them, so that they may be captured. Woe to me because of my injury. My wound is incurable. Yet I said to myself, This is my sickness, and I must endure it. My tent is destroyed, all its ropes are snapped. My children are gone from me, and are no more. No one is left now to pitch my tent, or to set up my shelter. The shepherds are senseless, and do not inquire of the Lord. So they do not prosper, and all their flock is scattered. Listen, the report is coming, a great commotion from the land of the north. It will make the towns of Judah desolate, a haunt of jackals. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. Discipline me, Lord, but only in due measure, not in your anger, or you will reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the peoples who do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob, they have devoured him completely, and destroyed his homeland. Isaiah 17 A Prophecy Against Damascus See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aurora will be deserted and left to flocks, which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim, and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when reapers harvest a standing grain, gathering the grain in their arms, as when someone gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain, as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day people will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day their strong cities which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten God, your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out, you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them, you bring them to bud, yet the harvest will be as nothing, in the day of disease and incurable pain, Woe to the many nations that rage, they rage like the raging sea. Woe to the peoples who roar, they roar like the roaring of great waters. Although the peoples roar like the roar of surging waters, when he rebukes them, they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. 
In the evening, sudden terror. Before the morning, they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot of those who plunder us. Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks guys, hit the like and subscribe and come back for more. All right guys, take it easy. Bye, God bless.